Hi there, thank you so much again for joining me on this channel. As always, I'm very grateful for all your previous views, likes, subscriptions and shares. It's Black History Month and I thought for this video uh, we'd take a look at those religious pioneers, people who have some way helped to influence their religion, uh, break boundaries and be role models for their respective faiths. As with all my videos, I know I'm able to cover every single aspect of these extraordinary people's lives. What I do hope is it just sheds a light into some of their work. As always, we'll be going through the religions in alphabetical order for parity of esteem. Buddhism and our first pioneer is Ruth King. Ruth used to be an organisational development consultant for companies such as Intel and Levi Strauss. However, she is now an international meditation teacher in the Theravada tradition of Buddhism. Uh, Theravada literally means the tradition of the elders. Speaking about her faith, Ruth says this of the Buddhist tradition. I wasn't really searching for something, but found myself very compelled by the idea I could be in a practice that was inviting you to know the experience of freedom on your own by turning inward and giving yourself what you need. And your freedom is not reliant on something outside of you. I think that's something that's really quite powerful. Buddhism, you're not reliant upon some kind of outside force or a deity or supernatural forces to actually achieve a sense of peace and enlightenment. The power is within you. And for some, that can be an incredibly freeing experience. What really drew me to sharing with you Ruth King's story was the foundation of this organisation, the Mindful of Race Institute, set up to help promote racial harmony and to work towards social cohesion and harmony. As it says on the site itself, racism is a heart disease and it's curable. For Christianity, I thought we'd look at Professor Robert Beckford, a journalist, writer and award-winning broadcaster. He's a theologian and he was inspired to get involved in religion thanks to his RE teacher who said that he helped sow the seeds to think about religion and culture. His mass tutor also introduced him to the works of Malcolm X. I was really drawn to this quote from Robert Beckford. When my African forebears became Christian, they transformed it. They mixed it with elements of African traditional religion. They oriented it towards justice and freedom. It is a tradition of liberation. I think it shows how Christianity can absorb other cultures and traditions. There are countless denominations uh, in the Christian tradition uh, and one church can look very different to another. But I think also it highlights how significant the impact of slavery was on Christianity and indeed the impact that Christianity had on the African population. It's an inescapable truth that the Christian church uh, was involved heavily in the slave trade and its impact is still being felt today. Professor Robert Beckford uh, has been involved in making this documentary called After the Flood. The movie looks at the involvement of the church in the slave trade. The church justified slavery. It even produced in the 1800s something known as the Slave Bible were removed passages about slavery. For example, the Jews being enslaved in Egypt. But there is also a broader point about the here and now. It's not just about being aware of what happened in the past. It's about what a church is doing now to overturn those injustices of the past. It's a dialogue that is happening now and it's not just Professor Robert Beckford who is bringing it to the fore. There are many others too. I'm sorry if being in the middle has thrown you somewhat, it just feels slightly strange. The reason is simple. Looking at Hinduism, uh, four names kept coming up. What I suddenly realised is that all of them had actually shared uh, an interview on another YouTube channel. I found it really difficult just to select one of them, so I decided, well, let's just have all four of these remarkable religious pioneers. One of the things I didn't realise as I was putting this together is that when slavery ended in the British colonies in the Caribbean, over a million Indians went to work in the Caribbean. They brought with them 
uh, the Hindu faith. And as a result, uh, these cultures mix with the Caribbean, so close to the United States of America. That's how Hinduism uh, began to uh, take a foothold in the United States of America. Please excuse my pointing. We have Adriana, who specializes in Asian archaeology uh, and was drawn to Hinduism uh, through its artwork. We have Ellie, who's an influencer, news anchor and been involved in the world of fashion. Lana, who's an Afro-Caribbean Indian trans woman, who's a social media personality, uh, model, singer, actress and makeup artist. And then there's Robin, who found tranquility and peace uh, in the Hindu faith and that actually helped her to battle depression. And it's a quote from her that I'd like to focus on. In this online interview, uh, the four women share what it's like being a black Hindu woman and some of the prejudice that they face. Robin tells this extraordinary story where she goes to the temple to worship. And as she's signing in, uh, a woman behind the counter says, oh, you're dressed as an Indian to come to the Indian temple. Robin replies with, no, I'm dressed as a Hindu to come to the Hindu temple and worship Shiva. What struck me is, first of all, a reminder that Hinduism is not an ethnic group. It's a religion which welcomes anybody and everybody. But wasn't it interesting how uh, when she was signing in, the person at the temple assumed that Robin was not a Hindu. And in fact, she was there to go and practice her faith uh, and worship Shiva. Part of the fun of putting these videos together is finding out new things. And I didn't know there was a coalition of Hindus of North America. The organization supports uh, Hindus in North America uh, as they practice their faith and just helps to educate people about Hinduism. It's a great interview and it's brilliantly chaired uh, by Pushpita Prashad. Next is Islam and the supremely talented Mahershala Ali. He was the first Muslim actor to win an Oscar. He belongs to the Ahmadiyya tradition of Islam. It began in the late 1800s and a distinctive feature of the Ahmadiyya tradition is that they believe that Jesus did actually die on the cross. But in terms of following the five pillars, there are many similar traits and traditions as you would see in say the Sunni and Shia. He says of his religion, at the end of the day, we're all spirits having a physical experience. That really comes from my relationship with Islam because it just makes me really conscious of my action. I think that's such an honest quote from Mahashela to say about how his Islamic faith really makes him self-evaluate and consider his actions and how he treats those around him carefully. Mahershala is also part of the Marvel Cinematic Universe, the biggest franchise there is at the moment. He's already had a voice-only appearance as the vampire hunter Blade uh, at the end of the movie The Eternals, and we're looking forward to his solo project coming out next year. It's a reminder of how skilled he is as an actor and how, as a black Muslim, he continues to break down barriers. He really is a pioneer. Judaism, and we have Rabbi Gershom Sizemu. He was the first native-born black rabbi in sub-Saharan Africa. Worth remembering too that he was raised as a child during the brutal regime of Idi Amin, where it was illegal to practice Judaism in Uganda. As well as being a spiritual leader, he's also involved in politics. He was elected to represent his district in the Ugandan parliament. This made him the first Jewish parliamentarian in Uganda. I found this lovely quote uh, from the rabbi uh, on Twitter, and he says, my existence is a lesson. Wherever I go, I teach people what Jews look like. It's about breaking down barriers, isn't it? And shattering stereotypes. And I just love how he has this wonderful confidence within himself. It also strikes me how he understands the responsibilities of being a rabbi, how he is in some ways not just responsible for the stewardship of those in his synagogue, but also how his political responsibilities are caring for people in his district and how he is going to be judged and looked at as a minister of faith. It took me a little while to find uh, but he's also involved in music and his album Sing for Joy uh, 
uh, is a Ugandan Jewish music. And uh, it just shows you uh, how his many, many talents. Siki and we have Brianna Sukmani Kaur and Gerfried Kaur. The murder of George Floyd caused not only protests in the United States of America, but around the world. Brianna and Gerfried uh, were inspired to actually start an organization originally called the Black Sikh Initiative. Now it's called the Black Sikh Collective. And the idea is to provide a network for black Sikhs uh, to support each other and to help them to educate people about what their faith is about. Brianna says, being a black Sikh or being a non-Punjabi Sikh, it feels nice to know there are people out there that you can relate to that can basically guide you. Brianna has been working to make Gurdwaras uh, more inclusive. And she's also hoping as well that the Black Sikh Collective uh, will encourage and promote dialogue again to break down those barriers and to build understanding. Exploring their website, I was really struck by one of the headings. It simply says, a platform for black Sikhs because representation and community matters. An important part of the Sikhi faith is savor, selfless service. And what's interesting is how the Black Sikh Collective are looking to support, to serve Sikhs within their own community. It's also a fitting way, uh, I think, to sum up all of these pioneers. Representation and community matters. One thing I do want to say, which is really important, is that for each of our pioneers, I'll put down below a link. And this link will show you some of their work. So, for example, for Ruth King, you'll have a link to her website and including some guided meditations. For Professor Robert Beckford, there'll be a link to his movie, After the Flood. For Hinduism, a link to the Kona interview. For Islam, a link to Maharshala Ali talking about his career so far. For Judaism, a link to the rabbi's music. For Sikhi, a link to the BSC website. As always, I apologise for my awful pronunciations. Uh, I apologise if I missed anything out on these remarkable lives. Uh, it was very difficult to whittle it down. I really do hope that I did justice to the careers and the work that you're doing now. As always, please do feel free to like, comment and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching. Whatever you do to mark Black History Month, I do hope it goes well and enjoy your learning. <laughs>